Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the BSG Automotive channel. Today we're going to show you how to change your rear pads and rotors on your 2008 and newer Dodge Caravan and Chrysler Town & Country once they went to the boxy style like this right here. Today we're working on a 2013 uh, Chrysler Town & Country for our example vehicle, uh, but pretty much 2008 and newer is all the same. Now the procedure is fairly simple. The only special tool that's required but you may already have is this tool right here. It's used to, to both twist and compress the caliper piston back in because these have the integrated parking brake built right into the regular brake caliper on there. Otherwise, it's a fairly simple job. There are a few things you wanna look out for, uh, so make sure you pay attention. A few things I'm gonna point out because you may wanna have certain parts on hand with your pads and rotors uh, to change out beforehand so you don't get stuck. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing you wanna do, of course, is jack your vehicle up, put it on some jack stands in the pinch weld here, make sure the vehicle's nice and safe, chop your front wheels, and get the wheel off the ground. Now, if you don't have an impact tool like this right here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is use a regular half-inch breaker bar in your 19 millimeter socket while the vehicle is still on the ground, and we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna break torque on the wheels, as you can see, when it's already up in the air, it's just gonna spin. So you need the weight of the vehicle on there. Just break torque on it, a thread or two, on all, all, all of them on here, all five. And once they're loose just a little bit, you can jack it up, put on jack stands, and continue on. For me, I have an impact, so I can do it while it's up in the air. So we're gonna go ahead and take the lug nuts off. 19 mil. These are over torqued, big time. This thing's a 650 foot pound uh, impact and it's having a hard, hard time pulling off lug nuts that should be torqued to 100 foot pounds. So, look at that, it's killing. It's probably 150, 200 foot pounds. Way too much. Yeah. All right, they're all off of there. Now at this point with the lug nuts off, the wheel still may not come off the vehicle. You can't just pull it off. So what a lot of times it gets rusted to the hub face and the rotor face on there. A lot of times just hitting it like this. We'll do it or people get on the ground, they start kicking on either side to get it to kind of break free. If it's this bad like this, what you wanna do is put a lug nut back on, on the lower portion here, okay? And then you're gonna take something like this, a soft face dead blow. This one's a uh, four pounder. And we're gonna hit the backside right here on the edge of the rim on the backside though. And that'll make it, uh, that'll break the bond, but it won't, won't damage the rim. Looks something like this. And a lot of times it's a few taps like that and the dead blow part of that hammer really helps. Break torque, hold it back on there. And the reason I put this lug nut on, back on, is you don't want to tap it and the thing goes flying away. That'll kind of retain it. All right, put that to the side, take our wheel, and get it out of here. All right, now because it's impossible to, to film and show you in good detail what's going on over here as I'm working with you in the wheel well, what I'm gonna do now is take you off of there, bring you in close, show you everything we're gonna do, up close so I can point out everything and you're not lost. And then I'll pull you back and I'll let you guys see it all happen in real time, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, let's pop you off of here so we can show you exactly what's going on over here. Now, as you can see, this brake caliper is pretty standard, bracket assembly, uh, it's all pretty standard on here. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off this wiring. This wiring is attached to the brake hose uh, for the ABS. We're just gonna pop it off to get out this side because we're gonna, we're gonna pull this hose and the caliper out of the way and you don't wanna tug it on the ABS. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the top and the bottom um, bolts for the caliper. They're 13 millimeter. We're gonna pop those off and put them to the side. At that point, we can stick a claw tool in here, right here, you'll see me do it. And we just kind of pop it out and it'll come out free, uh, away from the caliper bracket, we'll put it over here, up and out of the way. Then we're gonna go after the bracket itself and the pads inside, okay? In order to do that, on the back side here, there's an 18 millimeter bolt right there and a little protection bracket for the boot they've installed on some models. And then up here, same thing, another 18 millimeter. We're gonna brake torque on those, pull them out, 
off to the side, and then the bracket and the pads will come out together, okay? The next thing we're gonna go after is the rotor itself. Now, some of these have an O-ring right here, okay? And that holds it on from the factory. If it's there, make sure you pick it off, throw it away. And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and tap this rotor off of here. A lot of times you see the hub face on here on the back side is quite large. Uh, it's gonna have a rust bond, okay? So it's gonna be stuck to it. So we're changing the rotor already. So we're gonna tap it here and here and a few spots like that, avoid the studs, and that'll break the bond. If that doesn't break the bond, we can tap on it from the back side of the hammer in this opening here once all this is gone. And that'll help get the, the old rotor off of there. And then we'll clean it all up and we'll kind of start putting it all back together. I'll bring it in for the key points uh, going back together uh, so you guys know exactly how to do it. All right, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull this ABS wiring off of the brake hose. So there's a little strain on it. And we'll get that up and on the way, get all those out of the way. And then we're gonna go after the two 13 millimeter bolts that hold the brake caliper on. Get them loose and loose, and then you can pull them all the way off. Put those off to the side. Don't lose those. Okay. And then at this point, this caliper pretty much just will lift off of here. Depending on how loose it is. If not, you're gonna need something like this, a little pry tool, you can try to help it up and off of there. It's a little tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up and over, and we're just gonna put it over here and out of the way, just like that. And the actual parking brake cable is gonna hold that from falling, and this is just gonna go right over so we're not straining the brake hose itself. At this point, we can go ahead and try and pop these suckers out of here. They should come right out. Uh, what you wanna do is keep them off to the side for the side that you're working on because there's anti, well, there's a, a squealer indicator, wear indicator on these, and they go in a certain way. So you wanna keep them off to the side so you can match up the new pads. These ones are coming out real nice. Go ahead and change these. And we can go ahead while it's still mounted up and start popping off these clips on here, these anti-rattle clips. Nice and easy to do it right now. All the way, you all know, rust it up like this. You always wanna change these clips. These keep the pads in check, keep tension on them, kinda of like a preload, uh, and it keeps them quiet and in place. Okay, so now that that's all stripped down, we can go ahead and unbolt the caliper bracket itself. On the back side here, there's 18 millimeter bolts. So I'm gonna use a long 3 8 like this to break torque on them and then we can pull them out after that. I think the torque's only 70 some foot pounds, so it's not that bad. And these generally don't seize or anything like that. Okay, broke torque on them, and then we can get it off to the side. Now this bottom one, like I said, is gonna have this uh, special bracket on some models that protects the boot for the caliper pin on there. Uh, you wanna keep this off to the side, just the way it is, the way it came out. And make sure it goes back on the bottom bolt for the bracket here. Top one's just a bolt by itself, like that, off to the side, and then out comes the bracket itself, okay? The problem with these brackets, 2008 and newer, is sometimes the rust builds underneath these, these, uh, these clips and it causes the pads to seize. Uh, but a bigger problem is these pins, these guide pins, they're supposed to slide in and out, they seize, okay, a lot of times. So if you check your, your local dealer, they'll probably have this bracket in stock. We used to keep them in a couple sets in stock at all times because these would seize early on and they would cause your pads to wear uh, prematurely so sure enough the top one's okay and you pull it out of here and it's just fine greased up everything's kosher okay the bottom one though this bottom one on here is down by the salt and the grime 
I can't even turn it. Uh, it's a real fight to get them out, so you might want to just buy new ones and be done with it. Um, we're going to work this one out on the bench. I'll show you some techniques for that uh, to save it. At this point, we're pulling the rotor off of here. Like I said, if you have the O-ring, you pick the O-ring off, toss it. Otherwise, we're going to tap here, here, and here, and we're going to kind of break that rust bond. I'll try to show you. I use a three-pound sledge and some safety glasses. Just make sure you don't hit the studs. Like that. And we're gonna break that rust bond on there. Because these things, you know, look at the back side, the face on there has a lot of surface area to rust. And then right here in the center hub flange is where it gets stuck too. So it, it can really get stuck on there. Go ahead and get rid of this, the scrap pile. All right, so going back together, you wanna to start cleaning everything up and lubricating it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit these mounting flanges, right? these ears off the axle. Uh, we're gonna clean those up. Those will get really rusted too. Uh, and that will cause your caliper bracket to be mounted up cockeye on there. And that can cause a host of problems with uneven pad wear, et cetera. So go ahead and clean those up. <laughs> just to get the corrosion off there, and that's it. The same thing with your hub face on here and the center uh, of the hub on here. You wanna clean it the best you can with a, a wire brush or a die grinder like this and kind of get it as clean as possible so the new rotor sits in there nice and flush and there's no run out issues. So you're just getting enough off of there to get the rust off and that's it. Once you see clean metal, you stop. You don't need to go any further. And now try to get the inner part here too. Mm, something like that. And then I'll usually follow it up with a, a wire brush on here. You can use the tip of it here and just kind of get that hub flange on there, that centering hub, as clean as possible. All right. So we're gonna use a little bit of brake clean on here. Kind of get all that stuff out of here. We'll wipe it while it's still wet. This stuff dries real quick. It does a really good job of cleaning everything up. Let's do it like that. And then we'll use our compressed air. points on here are all cleaned up uh, what I like to do is put a little bit of anti-seize on there okay so right here you know it's a light coat in here so it doesn't build up in the future and then the same thing on here I'll get my other one actually I have more in there all right so here's the way to do it what you want to do is just kind of put a healthy dose on here and this is all just to prevent any future corrosion, so it comes apart much easier in the future, and there's no uh, rust runout issues. What you're gonna do is put a healthy dose kind of in the center like that. You know, it's good to have gloves on for any of this stuff, because it's all pretty nasty, the chemicals and all that. And we're just gonna put a healthy dose in there, okay? And then we're gonna put a healthy dose in the center. Uh, this will help with the, the rotor itself, and also the wheel. It'll help with the wheel coming off easier in the future. Uh, for tire rotation and stuff like that because all these american cars are hub centric the way they center on the on the wheel on the vehicle they're not lug centric like the other manufacturers out there once you get a healthy dose on there it's kind of smeared around evenly avoid the studs you don't want to get any on the studs anti-seize and wheel lug nuts do not mix i've seen too many wheels come off because if you get any on there just simply wipe it off you can see, you know, the first inch or an inch and a half 
uh, where the lug nut actually threads on there and the rest of it of course never touches the lug nut so you can see you just kind of smear it around on there and this will help tremendously in the future all right now it's time to put the rotor on there now that we're putting new parts back on let's talk about the parts themselves you always want to go oem if possible um, the reason being is you want to do it once and be done and with OEM parts, you're gonna have the least amount of headaches afterwards and they're gonna last the longest, it's worth the extra money in the end. So if I'm working on a Chrysler product or a Dodge, I use the Mopar, working on the Fords, I use the Motorcraft stuff, and I just, I, it's, it's good for business and it's good for peace of mind. If you're working on your own vehicle, there's gonna be no issues, no noise issues, and it's gonna work uh, for the life of it. So these are Mopar rotors on here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna, um, once they come out of the box, they're gonna have an oil coating on them, some of them. What you wanna do is spray brake clean onto a rag, a clean paper towel, and then you're gonna wipe it off on the face here and back here, get that oil off there. That oil is for storage. You don't want that contaminating your new pads. So get that off of there. This one's nice and clean. And we can go ahead and line it up on there. Where's that? Right there, just like that. Now, what a lot of techs do is they use the lug nuts from the vehicle and they'll just kind of spin them on here. And this will hold the rotor flat against that hub flange on there so it stays perfect while we're working on the bracket and the pads and the caliper instead of it flopping around. All right, so this is set right now. Everything here is ready to go. Now we start the daunting task of uh, renewing this brake caliper bracket. Like I said, the one is gonna be just fine, almost always the top one. Uh, whereas that lower guide pin is going to be seized in there. So let's go to the bench. I'm going to show you a few techniques to get these loose and how to clean them up and get them back into service. All right, so the best way to free one of these uh, caliper guide pins is to actually put the guide pin in the vise. So it's going to have a nice square on the end of it, especially the lower one. So it'll perfectly sit in a vise, crank her down, and let it hold that pin while you take the bigger portion of it and work it back and forth. Now this one, you can see, you know, it, it's, it's moving, okay? But it's not going in and out. They get a rust ridge inside of there and they will not move in and out. The last one I had on the other side of the vehicle, I could not even move this at all. So what I had to do is take, put in the vise like this and then put a pry bar through here Okay, here and here, see how it fits in there? And work it back and forth and get it to start moving on there. Once you get it to the point where it can move like this, but it's still, oh, come, oh, come on. Yeah, it's still an issue. You need it to plunge in and out. It has to slide. They're caliper guide pins. Uh, they're made to slide in and out on there. What you want to do at that point, once it's able to move, okay, we can move it but it's a little tight and definitely won't plunge. We'll put it back in the vise this way, okay? What you need to do is clean the inside of the bore on the inside of this, this part of the housing here, okay? And the best way to do that is to get the bolt for it. All right, so this is what you wanna do. We're gonna use the pin itself to clean the bore. So it's already stuck in there. We need to clean the bore in the end. We need to clean the bore to get it out. Let's just clean the bore right now, okay? We're gonna put our caliper bolt back on there. It already moves, okay? It just won't plunge. And then we're gonna take an impact, or by hand, uh, but impact works best, it's nice and fast. And we're simply gonna spin it, use it as a reamer. Push in. And you see this one's starting to spit water. That's what happens, they get water, they get rusty, da da da. I just want to give us some time to kind of clean that bore out. Now, this is generally just going to clean the rust off and the dirt and whatever else is inside of there. The scale uh, generally won't ruin the actual bore inside of there. 
Now this one, like I said, is not that bad. The other side was just plain seized, but I used the same methods. Once you was able to turn by hand, but wouldn't plunge, I used that to clean the pin. So you should be able to see it now. There's the pin right there. So these things, the rubber on here gets uh, chewed up in there. Then there's rust build up here and it just can't plunge inside of there. So once all part like that, we saved it great. Uh, it is possible, as you just saw, even the other side of the vehicle that was really bad, I was able to you know, save it. Um, what you wanna do at this point is of course clean with a wire brush, the pin on here, uh, both pins, we're gonna grease them and then we're gonna reinsert them and make sure these boots go back on, okay? So the same thing with the inside of the bore in here, we're gonna clean out some compressed air and get it all nice and good to go so it can plunge once again. All right, so this is how I clean out the inside. I use a flathead screwdriver, like a full size one. And we'll go inside of here, we'll scrape it all the way to the back, okay? Unless you have like a reamer, reamer brush or something like that, you never really can get it perfectly clean, uh, but this will do it enough, you know. Us spinning that, that actual pin in there, that was like a reamer, it's cleaning it out around the full circumference of the inside of the board there. So let's kind of get out anything else inside of there. Then we'll use some compressed air. clean once again to kind of flush it out then I'll melt any goop inside of there same thing use your air cover it up and then we're going to take this sucker to uh, the bench grinder the wire brush and clean it up nice now, once your guide pin is all cleaned up, we're going to use uh, silicone brake grease on the pins. And that'll protect them, it'll lubricate them, all that good stuff. And once it's fully lubricated on there, it'll slide right in and out real freaking nice like that. Okay, it'll spin, all that good stuff. Don't forget your other side that wasn't seized. You want to do the same thing so it doesn't seize in the future. Just clean it off real quick. Okay. Like that, like nice and new. And the same thing, put a healthy dose on there and smear it around. Just like that. Get back in there until it locks on the boot. And that's all good to go. Now the other issue with these, like I said, is rust builds underneath here, okay? In these, these channels right here. So it'll grow up on both sides and it'll sh like kind of like uh, pin that that uh, that brake pad in there. So you want to get in here with a wire brush and clean all the excess rust out of here. So again, so the pads can slide free in these channels on here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that and get it all cleaned up, and then we'll come back. We'll start putting the clips into here. All right, now once you clean out the channels, they're gonna be nice and clean, no more rush. You can see everything looks good to go, uh, but they are exposed bare metal now. So what, what you wanna do is go ahead and put a light coating of the anti-seize inside that channel before you put the clips on. Now these anti-rattle clips, they simply clip right on. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory. Obviously you don't wanna put them this way because that's gonna stick out where the rotor is in there. You see it there? So obviously you want this part, this loop right here on the outboard side. And they clip right in, just like that. See how it's clipped in right here on this side and the part that sticks out is on the outboard side. And the same thing for the other one. You just kind of clip in your fingers in there. And these are kind of hard to get in. And you just get them snapped in on all four points on here. Sometimes it does take two hands to do it. You just want to make sure uh, that you get it fully seated inside of here in the channel. Okay, you want to fully seat it in the channel so everything's good to go. Once you get these clips in there, um, we're cleaned up, clips are back in. 
Our pins are now free, cleaned up, and greased. We can go ahead and take this back over to the vehicle and start bolting it up. All right, going back together. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our caliper bracket bolts, those 18 millimeter bolts. We're gonna use a little bit of blue Loctite on them and then retain them. And then we're gonna use, we're gonna use the top one and we're gonna get it started. That'll line everything up, it's a lot easier that way. So go ahead and get it in the right orientation here. Get it inside of here, make sure you don't knock any of your clips off. And it's, it's so much easier to see the top bolt hole and get it lined up that way. Take your uh, bracket and your bolt for the lower one. And we can start getting that into place. See? What makes it easier is the top one's holding the height on there. So we just need to kind of adjust it a little bit, swing it in, and we can line it up. So we'll go ahead and we'll just snug it down back here. Get them snug in place, like so. Okay, everything's in place. And then, if you're interested in torquing them, the torque spec is 75 uh, foot pounds for the caliper bracket bolts. 75 foot pounds. So go ahead and torque these down. Basically, if you use a, a longer 3 8 like this or a shorter half inch drive, and you kind of just really crank it down hand tight, plus the blue lock tight, you're gonna be good to go. Um, but of course, it's always better and proper to torque them down. All right, 75 foot pounds, good to go. Now the bracket's in place. Now comes the fun part. We're not gonna pop the pads in just yet because we need to wrestle this caliper back over. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean both these ears on the inboard side and then the actual, um, the piston face on here. So a lot of times I just use a wire brush on there. You just really light scale. You're just kind of getting the dirt and the grime off of there. And the same thing with that piston face on there. You can see this one's pretty good to go. I mean, it's nothing really, no real major buildup on there. And the same thing. Brake clean on a rag. And we'll clean the inside of the ears and that piston face. The reason we're doing this is because at the end here, we're gonna apply that same silicone brake grease uh, to these surfaces, so it's a nice, quiet uh, brake for the long term. Okay, looks good to go. Lights are a flash in here. All right, so real quick, I'll bring you in and let you guys see a little bit better. It might be a better angle in general. You don't need to see my ugly mug, do you? There we go. Now, this piston has these two notches on it right here. And that's what we're gonna use to actually uh, turn and press in with this special tool. Okay, they sell little cubes that look just like this, kind of do the same thing. They're cheaper, I'll link to everything down below. So this one, Takes it like this. So we're basically gonna get in there, we're simply gonna turn this piston, turn it clockwise and push in. And that's the whole point of these tools. So we're gonna get lined up with the notches in there. It's all pretty simple. Get started, okay. And then I need my seven eighths. Turn this counterclockwise, and then we'll spin the piston clockwise. It may stick on the boot at first, uh, but it'll spin right in. 
The point is to keep pressure on it, pushing in while you're turning clockwise. Uh, that's the whole point of this nut right here. And we just simply turn it. Generally, these go right in, you know. Just kind of get it up and out of the way here. And you're just going to turn, turn, turn until it doesn't turn anymore. And that's when it's compressed all the way in. sure it's just fully compressed by putting this pressure on it when you have pressure on it like this and you're turning it'll turn 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 and then it'll just stop right now I'm fighting the boot in there sometimes the boot right there it stopped I can't do it no more okay so we'll go ahead and we'll loosen this That's that. Now, your new pads, your new pads are gonna have this little nub right here in the center. You see that right there? That must line up with the keyway inside of here. So you can see right now, it's like this, it's pointing this way. So this pad would never line up and sit flush on there, okay? What you wanna do, now that's fully compressed, is you can turn it as needed so that lines up on there i'm still fighting the boot but yeah now if your boot's getting a little twisted and it's hung up on there from rust and stuff like that you can see mine looks all discombobulated deformed simply use a pick kind of pull it out of the way okay all the way around and allow it to relax on there a lot of times they get trapped and they get poofy, they get air trapped in there, they get stuck, they get hung up on it. It's just a dust boot. And you kind of just work it all the way around just like that. And there it is. All right, let's bring you in so I can show you how it's supposed to look. This is critical. You see how these ears, these notches right here are facing just like that? That's gonna accept that new pad on there. So the pad, the rest of the pad will sit flush on the piston face, and then the notches sit right here, okay? Like I said, these notches right here. Let me see if I can uh, get it up inside of here so we can show you the reason for that. Get it kind of centered in there. You see how it's supposed to sit in there, a little notch? That's why so it can sit all the way down. So you gotta make sure it's all lined up like that. All right, now we're in the home stretch. With everything cleaned up, ready to go back together, our piston is pushed back in. The last part we gotta do is put a little bit of grease on the face of the piston and the back side of the ears here. Now that's all cleaned up and ready to go. I prefer this silicone brake grease because it lasts and it's worked out for me for oh, how many years now uh, doing brake jobs at the dealer on my own here. It's great stuff. All right, we'll put this back out of the way. See ya. Clean our hands. And then we're going to start installing the brake pads. And this is the other critical point. You want to pay attention, okay? So we took our pads out earlier and these are our old pads okay you can see this one's outboard by the two ears imprint on the outside of that caliper and this is the pistons this is inboard okay so we simply need to match them up with our new pads so we're gonna kind of get it lined up and you're gonna match them up the, the wear indicator on here as you can see it doesn't match up Wrong one. Looking, looking, looking. 
and they match up. The wear indicator is in the right spot. So the inboard, this is the inboard pad right here. So we'll go ahead and put it in. And it's a little tricky to get in here. I'll show you better on the outside one there, don't worry. Okay, real nice. They go in there real freaking nice. So of course the other one matches up with our indicator on there. Here's the trick to installing the pads, okay? What you're gonna do is you don't wanna just slide them in to the brackets. You wanna angle them, get them in there, and then pop them, okay? So it looks a little something like this. So we're getting it in so we can get it in that channel, okay? Get it all the way in there. We're compressing over here a little bit, okay? And then you pop, see? So it's at an angle, push in, pop, just like that. And you see how these, they're, these are nice and smooth inside of the, the channels in here, so the bracket, that's how they should move. They should be able to compress, apply the brakes, and then come back out. So everything's good to go, greased up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and set our caliper back in here. Now, because of the parking brake and the way it is, it's a little bit hard to pull this back far enough to get around to hook it in here, especially in the driver's side. This side's not so bad. You're gonna compress these guide pins in so you can get the, um, the caliper past it there. Top and bottom, okay. Just like that. And then we're gonna take our caliper bolts. Again, start with the top. It's nice and easy, you can see everything, line it up. And you're again threaded in by hand. These are fine thread, they're very easy to cross thread. Uh, so if you thread them in by hand like this, a couple threads, you're never gonna cross thread them. Absolutely never. All right, we're good to go. Tighten them down. The torque spec on these is 27 foot-pounds. Um, again, a lot of times what I do is I'll snug them and then I'll do it by hand. Especially with these, uh, these gear wrenches, I have a good feel for them. Like right here, it's moving, 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 tight, a little past, and that's it. Um, that's all there is to it. Don't forget your ABS wiring. Okay, clip back in so it's not dangling down the road. Good to go there. So ABS wiring back in, our two bolts for the caliper back in, our uh, pad notch on the inside and the piston are all lined up. Everything's greased, the pads are moving free, uh, the brackets torqued down. We can go ahead and pull this guy off and start putting the wheel back on. All right, everything looks good. Let's go ahead and pop the wheel back on. Let's get it lined up. Kind of hold it in the center there. And these ones especially, you want to get them hand threaded on there. You can get the first one on like this. And I kind of snug it. So it's holding it for you. And then you can go ahead and get the rest of these on here. A couple of threads, and that'll make sure there's not any issues. I do not recommend any anti seize, any oil, any anything on these threads. They're galvanized, they're good to go. You don't need anything on there. So we'll snug it down. In a star pattern like that. Now, once they're, they're snug on there, what you wanna do is just spin your wheel. Should be no noise like that. The worst you may hear is a little bit of drag from the pads on the rotor itself, um, but otherwise you should hear no noise, no screeching noises, no clanking noises, nothing, okay? It's a good pre-check before the vehicle goes back down and you go on a test drive. Everything sounds good. At this point, we can go ahead and drop the vehicle back down and then we can proceed to torque these lug nuts to 100 foot-pounds. Go on a test drive, make sure everything sounds good, pedal feels good, uh, it's braking okay. Uh, make some turns so you can hear, kind of load up the hub up back here and listen for any kind of brake noises where it's screeching on the turns. 
If everything checks out okay, you come back, retorque the lug nuts to 100 foot pounds, and you'll be good to go. Should be, you know, 50 to 70,000 miles on these no sweat. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.